Hi there and welcome back to the CKM Red Rugby League channel. We hope wherever you are watching from, all is well in your world. It is Tuesday, uh, the team lists have just gone up, which means that we are uh, obligated to be going through them, giving out our best tips where we can. Uh, so, uh, how, how are you going, mate? Yeah, um, not too bad, actually. Not too bad at all. Um I think we can separate the weekend into two halves for us. Uh, 13 to 28 for me, 12 to 25 for you. I was running at one of 10 after the Parramatta game. So I came back, had a, had a decent run there, all things considered. Uh, what's that, 12 of 18. You, what was I say, 12 of 25. Your Melbourne multi got up at nine bucks. Your Sharky's multi got up. My Raiders multi up at 5.25. Cade Cust at five bucks, got a try. Joey Leilua at 360 got a try. So the numbers don't look great, but hey, we're giving out some good value. How are you going? I'm going well, mate, and I'm going very well because this morning I received a package from our good friends over at RCR, who are the sponsor of this video again. The guys over at RCR are supporting the channel and uh, use code CKM to get 20% off your order at www.rcr.com products.co.uk get you some body back on track or get fit just in time for Christmas in the UK but with that we will jump straight into the first game the Parramatta Eels take on the Melbourne Storm and this one is a pretty tough one to pick I know that before we started recording we had a small conversation about this one and the Parramatta fan over there Maybe about to change his colours. I don't know. What's your thoughts? <sighs> hey, look, I don't know, mate. Full, fully considering, I honestly don't know what I'm going to tip. I still don't know what I'm going to tip. I've got the team list now on the other laptop. I just, Parramatta have not played well the last couple of weeks. They got lucky against the Sharks. They deservedly lost against the Dragons, a needed loss, if you ask me. I, the, the saving grace for Parramatta is that this is the second string of the storm. They've got six of their starting 13 out. Uh, Cam Smith not back this week, Brandon in the nine. You've got Sandor Earl coming in for Vunavalu. Branko Lee shifts into the centres. They've still got Riley Jackson in the six, Nico Hines in the 14. No... Uh, no Finucane. Dale Finucane as well. Yeah. Yep. He's out with the torn calf. So T Big Tino comes in at lock. Oh, oh, Tino v Nathan Brown. Mm. Good morning. Hello. Mm. Um, mate, I honestly don't know. The Storm. Okay. I'm going Parramatta. Okay. I'm going Parra on the head to head. But the Storm at 225 and a Storm 1 to 12. At 340, 13 plus at 650 is screaming value. And I know that folks in Punt Hub, I know folks in a lot of tipping groups, a lot of, a couple of gambling groups that I'm in, they are smashing the Storm 13 plus. So Eels on the head to head, but mate, you could make a reason for either way. You could. And I like you. I feel that this is a very a very weakened Storm side. I mean, you've got Sander Earl and Brenko Lee as, as an edge combination that has not been seen yet this season. I don't think, not even pre-lockdown. Don't, don't quote me on that one. Um, Eisenhoof comes out of the centre into the 15 shirt. Faso Malawi comes into the loose. He's not a renowned ball player. He's more of a running player. Whereas Fanukan has that that late ball in him. So I'm I'm a little wary of that. I'm also wary of the fact that Jerome Hughes is back. And do you know what? A lot of the time, he will just back himself. So I'm looking at a Jerome Hughes anytime try. But I say take... Take... I'm, no, do you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go the over. Because in the last two meetings between these sides Storm 32 nil on the last one the time before that 64 10 to the Storm so there's points in this 
one. I don't think that they're going to keep Parramatta under 20, but then again, I did say that about the Dragons last week, but there you go. Um, so I say take, take the over on the points on that one, just because I think there will be points in this one, uh, and take Jerome Hughes on an anytime try scorer. Those are my two. If I, I'm going to back any team, just because me and you, we do, we do our own little head-to-head battle, I am going to say that the Eels win this one. Oh, you're taking me on on this one. All right, I like it. I appreciate it because I have no confidence in Parramatta, to be completely honest. Um, Hughes at five bucks, the over, a buck 90. Uh, the over's 36 and a half as well. Uh, and together that is a 750 multi, which I think is a great shout. Sevo has never gone more than three games without scoring a try until last week. Sevo is not a wet tracker. However, there is no rain forecast for this week. He comes up, I believe, if the numbers line up, against a winger who hasn't really played, a very solid winger in, in Sandor Earl. But I don't know if he can take Sevo on from close range. But again, accounting for me usually screwing up which side wingers are playing on, if he comes up against Josh Adokar, Adokar loves screaming in, trying to get the intercept. Moses, a little cheeky kick over the top, or that long ball that Adokar gets wrong. I can see Sivo going over at a dollar eighty, and he's at Bankwest, so you know you can't argue that. I'd love to say Blake Ferguson, but mate, you can't trust him. Can't trust him one single bit. Um, I do like your thinking of the over, but even though I'm saying Eels head to head, I'm taking the Storm. On the line at three and a half, I, I just don't know. I, I don't have any confidence in Parramatta. Call it a little bitch bet and hedging and trying to save the money a little bit perhaps, but I think this is going to be close. Um, in the last five games, the only time that it's been that close, Melbourne got up 18 to 16. Um, everything else has been a 13-plus win in favour of the Storm. Uh, sorry, except for a Parramatta 22 to 6. But I think the storm will keep it close. They're just they're nitty, they're gritty. It might be a second string storm, but they're still good enough to beat a lot of teams in this competition. Uh, that's all I'm going to give on this one. Eels head to head. The storm at three and a half. Sevo anytime try scorer. That might, that should pay really good if you go just Sevo in the storm three and a half. It's four thirty three. If you're ballsy enough to put para head to head into that as well, eighteen seventy five. Okay then. Well, we will get off that one and uh, on to the next one then. The Penrith Panthers take on the Cronulla Sharks. And for me, this one's got points written all over it. The uh, the Panthers, only one change to their 17, and that's Dylan Edwards back into the fullback shirt, um, named officially this week. I know that he did feature. Um, but... The Sharks as well, one to seventeen, completely unchanged. It's. I think there's going to be a fair few points in this one. Um, not going to lie, I know that the Sharks can be very defensively suspect, to say the least. Um, the Panthers can post points against teams that have those lapses on the edges, and for for me, the Panthers look too good to look past here. Uh, they're they're looking to basically finish finish the comp with a win here um, and just keep on rolling through all the way to finals, take that minor premiership and I don't think the Sharks team is going to stand in their way. Now we spoke about this game not that long ago. It was last month and um, yeah, 80 points in that one. The It was the over I think was a 38 and a half in that game and it was smacked. Over 39 and a half it was, and 38 at half time. Uh, completely agree. I'm just going to straight up say take the over at 43 and a half. Great value. Um, as, you, as you mentioned, a you know, Sharks team that is defensively suspect at times. Four of the last five games have gone over the 43 and a half. In fact, you can roll it as far back as the North Queensland game in round four, the, Cab- uh, the Canberra game in round six. Three of their games have gone under 40, and that, and that includes the wet tracker two weeks ago against Parramatta. 
Again, I don't believe it's meant to rain on Friday. We've got the two laptops set up here, ladies and gentlemen, so don't mind me. Yep. A 10% <laughs> chance of precipitation, but less than a millimetre. So we'll just go ahead and say pretty well no rain. It's a 6 o'clock game. I believe they're playing it here in Sydney. So over 43 and a half, absolute juice there. You could probably smack a 100 on that. You'd be getting paid out by the 60th minute, if I'm being completely honest. Um, but, of course, because it is 4.50 on a Tuesday, sports bet don't have the anytime try score on markets up, so we can't give you value bets. I will say, though, um, with Naden on the wing and in current try scoring form, I'm going to quite happily take him as an anytime try scorer. Um, just too good a form, too rich a vein of form. I don't see him not getting over in this one. I think from a Sharks perspective, he's due. Um, he's been fantastic coming off the bench. I could see as a value bet, if you want to throw a fiver or, or whatever you want on this, uh, Toby, Rud Toby Rudolph barging over from close range. I'm going to give him as a value anytime try scorer as well. I think it's going to be an in interesting to watch this one play out because you've got two teams that love to bust it up the middle. They're not really edge teams. They're, most of their tries come from inside their 20s, uh, inside their opposition 20s, sorry. It's, they're, they're teams that basically make their living up the middle. You know, Kikau Martin, uh, Talakai Graham, it's going to be a big battle up the middle and it's going to be a case of whose forwards come off best, basically lays the platform and they're going to win this game. The Panthers forwards have been completely unstoppable. There's not been a team this season that has made the Panthers look like the second best team on the field um, in regards to their forward pack. So with that, I I'm gonna go for a kick out anytime try scorer. I'm gonna go for Pan I'm gonna go the over as well, just because I think there's gonna be points. I was tempted to take Panthers to win both halves. But we have seen in recent weeks that the Sharks do have um, one good half in them and they do like a cheeky try before half time, which could prove problematic on that one. So I'm going to stay clear of that one. Uh, I'm just going to go William kick out anytime try scorer and the over as well. So should be a little bit of value in there. I just think that kick out with that late footwork Look at the line, you know, 10, 15 metres out, straight through. Oh, and right on time, we have anytime try scorer markets. So before we run on to the next game, we'll very quickly get around it. Uh, Kickout is paying 250 for an anytime try scorer. Um, I don't know if that's great value, but it's a chance. Toby Rudolph, Toby Rudolph, 11 bucks coming off the bench, I think is an absolute shout and a half. Uh, Brent Naden at a buck sixty-seven. I'm not going to give you give you a multi on that one, but I would imagine the multi would be upwards of fifty bucks uh, for you, young sir. Uh, kick out two fifty into the over. I think is paying close to five. If I've done my math and guesstimation right, I can't find it. Um, but while I do find it, mate, two and a half thousand views last week. These guys are coming in clutch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, big, big thank you to everyone that does tune in to watch these. Really appreciate the support. If you are enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Let us know if there's anything you want to see change as well. Just, uh, just let us know. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Four bucks on your multi, mate. Like I said, I'm not giving a, a multi on mine because I'm not throwing mine in a multi. Um, I'm assuming you'll go on the Panthers on the head-to-head. -head. You haven't said otherwise. But, yeah, that multi is yeah. definitely a shout. Okay, then. And with that, we will move on to yet another tricky game to call. The Brisbane Broncos take on the St. George Illawarra Dragons and the Broncos have gone through yet more enforced changes. Uh, the Dragons, only one change. They welcome back Paul Vaughan. But the Broncos, they bring in Jordan Kahu as Xavier Cutts pulled up injured. So Kahu goes to centre, Farnworth goes to wing. Milford back in a six shirt, Offer Hangawe 
is now your starting prop as well as Reese Kennedy because there's no Payne Haas this week. Tavita Pangai Jr. is still on stand down. Um, God, so many changes. Bullimore comes onto the bench. Hopawate joins him as well. There's what well, six changes there. That's not going to do any team any good. Yeah, no. And uh, as for the Dragons, uh, Paul Vaughan comes in. He's in the 17. Tristan Saylor drops out of the side, but that's it. I don't know what you're saying about a tricky game, mate. This is Dragons written all over it. This is... Um, the, 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 only yeah. reason, the, the only reason I say tricky game on this one is simply because I worry that the Broncos could just turn up. That, that's a big worry. When a team has been so poor for so long, they just have a habit of just randomly showing up and just ruining a banker. Look, I'm not using my infamous words because I think I went one for two last week when I dropped those. Um, but, yeah, I think this one definitely has the Dragons written all over it. They need this one. They're coming in off a really gritty, really good win last week against you know, a disappointing Parramatta side. Matt Dufty was MIA for my super coach team. That one, that one really hurt. And Lomax didn't come in clutch with my, my anytime try scorer. So I'm very, very, very sad about that. But that looked superb last week, defensively solid. This is a Broncos side that does look a lot better with Dearden in. I thought Dearden and Croft was starting just to get just a tiny, tiny bit of bit of um, cohesion with one another. But they dropped Milford, who has come back from a four- to six-week injury in two weeks question mark over whether that was actually an injury. Um, and that forward pack does not scream anything to me. Carrigan's been fantastic this year. Fafita, of course, it is great. Nofa Hengawi is an origin prop. But or an origin second row, sorry. But they're coming up against just this fantastic forward pack that took it to one of the best packs in the comp last week. McKinnis was a standout um, in what was Mary McGregor's last game. Look, Dragons all the way for me. Uh, it's just you can't pick the Broncos. You cannot, in good conscience, no. pick the Broncos. Yeah, I, I'm I'm struggling on this one, so I'm going to say take the over, just because there's been in excess of 43 points in their last two meetings. I'm going to say take Dragons on the. 13 plus. I'm going to I'm gonna back against my own conscience here and I'm going to say take Dragons on the 13 plus. That'll be the only tips I give on this one. I'm not confident on anyone for any time um, just because we've seen in recent weeks that when you, you, you back Lomax they go down Aitken's side, you back Aitken, they go down Lomax's side. <laughs> Ravalawa has a just, just has a mad amount of errors in his game and can very easily just put one out from five from uh, from five out, so I'm I'm just gonna take take the over, take the the dragons thirteen plus, uh, and leave that one there just because there's a, a real opportunity that the, the dragons go down the opposing side. Um, yeah, I I'm going against my conscience and not tipping Lomax for an anytime try scorer this week. Um, I kind of feel sick in my stomach doing that. You were waiting. You were waiting to take the Mickey out of me for that. Um, I will take the Dragons on the eight and a half, though. I think that um, their attack is too good. The last two of the last three times they've met, the Dragons have won by twenty plus. Um, and with this many changes coming into the Broncos' side, I really cannot to, um, cannot envisage the Broncos getting within. Eight and a half. I mean, the Dragons at 13 plus at 225 isn't a bad shout either. Um, but I'll save you on that one. Again, anytime try scorer markets aren't up. But if I'm looking at the team lists just to give someone maybe a, a cheeky try, I want to give some value. I'm going to go with Adam Kloon for an anytime try scorer. Should be around four, 450. That would be my guess. He's a running half. The Broncos at the best of times can't deal with halves that have any any sort of spark with them. Um, I think that they'll be very weary of Dufty coming out the back because of the weapons that we've already mentioned. Lomax, Aiken, Ravalawa, Pereira was fantastic last week. 
Um, and mm. with, yeah, you know, with off hand Gowie, Kennedy, T.O., I think Clune might find a cheeky way to dart himself down off a, off a block play at second receiver. So Dragons eight and a half, Clune anytime try scorer. Dragons head to head. That's that's pretty much all I've given you on that one. Yeah. We forgot to mention as well, no Jack Turpin this week as well. Isaac Lukin. Turpin's broken his hand. So he's he's gone from long term injured to back for week two weeks to to out injured as as well. Twenty twenty has not been his year, unfortunately. But again, that, that kind of spinal change will will just wreak havoc with the team. So Isaac Luke comes back into the nine shirt there, but you know, it's one of the one of the main reasons that I go I go dragons as well. Just those too many changes, too too much talent missing. Basically, I mean, there's still talent in that side. Tony Staggs, Dave Feeter Junior, but it's it's just too much for for me in the in the dragons side on the other end. So yeah, take t- take those back the dragons, and uh, we'll get on to the next one. The Gold Coast Titans take on the Canberra Raiders and the Titans have gone through a slight shift and uh, Wallace comes into your starting prop position. Uh, Mo Fotoaka goes to loose forward. Uh, Fermo and Stone come onto the bench. Tonema Payer named in the side as well. It looks like Philip Sammy will be back for this week. I know that he was named last week and didn't play um, just through in- Injury, but it looks like that injury has come to pass uh, and he is very likely to play this week. As for the Raiders, unchanged 1 to 17. If it's not, not broke, don't fix it. Like the approach, and the Raiders look too good to look past here. Yeah, completely agree with you there. The other one that I want to mention Anthony Don back in, Corey Thompson, being hard done by here, scores two tries and then gets shafted out for, for the leading try scorer in Titans history. But, yeah, the, the Don comes back and, yeah, completely agree. The Raiders, they, they looked the goods last week. Too good, too strong that second half against the Brisbane Broncos. Um, looking to go two weeks in a row here with a, with a Raiders multi getting up after last week's beauty. Um, as for the Titans, probably have their full strength side back minus Jai Arrow, who potentially has played his last game as a Titan. Uh, look. As much as I love the Titans and, and as much as they've improved this year, it you can't, I don't think, pick them, even though they are playing at the Gold Coast, even though they have played a lot better in, in recent times. Um, last four games, their losing margins have been 8, 6, and 12. And, you know, let's be real, the Sharks kind of turned it on in that second half. As for the Raiders... Three of their last four wins have been six or less. They lost, obviously, to the Panthers 28-12 to and then smacked Brisbane last week in the second half with the 30-to-zip second half. Gee whiz. Didn't realise it was that much. Uh, previous performances, the Raiders in the last two, three, four of the last five have won 13-plus, the only other time. Gold Coast 30-28. to uh, three of those five games have been over 50. And the winning team in all five games has scored more than 20 points. So what do I want to do? I'm not going to give an anytime try scorer on this one, but I will go with the Raiders on a race to 20. I They have the scoring prowess. Uh, I do believe that they're going to shift to the outside, probably to Sammy's wing. The Don is surprisingly good in defense, really good up in the air. Anthony Don could be a shout as an anytime try scorer, as I, as I say three seconds ago. Not that I'm not giving an anytime try scorer, but you know what? Screw it. I'll go back on that. Anthony Don, anytime try scorer. I think he's got a really good shout. He, he's just there or thereabouts. And every time that I say he's not going to score, he scores. I'm going to get get on him this week. He'll try and get around the likes of Jordan Rapner. Um, in terms of any value, there's not really a lot that I'm seeing. Again, sports bet have done it to the dirty. No anytime try score on markets. But I think I'm going to go 
I'm going to go with the Titans to win a half. I think they might. I think they're going to show up in one of these halves. And if you look at it, minus the game that they lost twenty-one nil, they've either drawn or won a half. So four of the last five, they've either drawn or won a half. So I'm going to go Titans to win a half. Anthony Don, anytime try scorer. And I forget what I said on the other one. Raiders race to 20. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling with this one. Worthwhile mentioning as well that at the time of recording, Kevin Proctor is an hour away from his judiciary hearing. So there could be another change depending on the outcome there. Uh, we have got that going in the background. We'll keep you updated as to uh, the outcome of that. But back to this game, I'm I'm going to go with I'm going to go Raiders race for twenty as well. I'm going to go with the over on this one. Although it's worthwhile mentioning that the last two meetings between these two, thirty points and twenty one points. <sighs> It doesn't doesn't fill me with confidence, but I just think the Raiders look a better side than those last two meetings. I think that the the Titans are going to struggle against those powerful ball runners, and I'm going to say that White and anytime try scorer as well. So I'm going to go for a triple on this one. All right, I'm going to before we move on, I want to give you some food for thought on this over. It's currently forty four okay. and a half. The last five games, the Raiders have not gone over 44. Brisbane total points 44, 40 against Penrith, uh, 26 against the Cowboys, 30 against the Bunnies, 44 against the Roosters. In fact, you can go back as far as around seven to Parramatta. That was a 49-point game. And as a matter of fact, they've gone over 44 twice this year. Around seven against Parramatta, uh, 49 points, 52 points when they lost to Newcastle in round four. And as you mentioned in the last two games, inclusive of right before the COVID period this year, they have gone 30 or less. Do you know what? I'm still going to back it. When when something hasn't happened that frequently, it's more likely to happen just because it's, it's one of those things where the Titans have been very good defensively. So I think that they're due a bad, bad game. I think that or alternatively, the Titans run the Raiders close and there's points. So I think that this one does get up over. Uh, and that's that one's more of a gut feeling than going by the stats just because of how good the Raiders were last week. Yes, against a god-awful Brisbane defence and arguably the Titans' defence has been somewhat better than Brisbane's in the last, I don't know, five to six weeks. But I see this one going over. All right. The West Tigers want to keep their finals hopes alive and the team that stands between them and doing that right now is uh, an albeit very changed Sydney Roosters side, of course. No Luke Keary, no, no Lachlan Lamb. Most of their starting forwards are, are not there anymore. You know, they welcome back Jared Weir Hargreaves. Um, it's just... There's so many changes to this Rooster side. Ikevalu's in, Brett Morris in, Flanagan back, uh, Freddie Lussick on the bench. Fafita goes to the bench as well with Collins out of the starting shirt, back to the bench where, to be honest, that's usually where he, he plays anyway. So as, as for the Tigers, just a slight move around. Garner goes on to the left side. And Lelua goes to the right, so they've swapped from 11 to 12. You've got McIntyre, Taylor, Reynolds and Safar on the bench. Other than that, unchanged uh, through the numbers. I, I worry about the Tigers this week just because when you're trying to keep your finals hopes alive and you come up against a team that's struggling with injuries, there's an opportunity for points. I have no idea which way to go. I will be completely honest because I have a gut feeling that the Tigers will show up and cause an upset. So, 
I, yeah, as you mentioned, the Roosters with a bunch of changes. Fred Lussick debuting off the bench. Flanagan back after being dropped a couple of weeks ago. Drew Hutchison will step up into the starting role in the six. Uh, Brett Morris coming back is huge, as is JWH for Tupelotu and Orbison. But Orbison, for me, a huge loss. You know, a big-time utility man. We've seen him play... Uh, second row, seen him play centre. He was playing lock for for a while there when he got hurt. Yeah, I, uh, the the one thing I question about the Tigers' selection is throwing Luciano and and Joey back on the same side. Um, we saw in the first couple of rounds that they looked pretty lazy on the same side, moving Luciano over to the left. I think, yeah, Luciano over to the left. Um, yep. Yeah, that kind of sparked his game. Arguably, one of the one of the underrated signings of the year. If you ask anyone that's not a Tigers fan, um, look, I, I I'm going the Roosters on the on the uh, on the tip, but I'm kind of hedging my bet here and saying that I'm going to go the Tigers on the twelve and a half line. So you can go either Tigers 12.5, Roosters 1-12, to 12, either way. Um, I think the Tigers make this one close. They have a point to prove. Uh, they ran them close last time out. Four of the last five times that these teams have played, the margin has been 12 or less. The only other time, the Roosters at the SCG last year, 42-12. to 12. I just don't know. This, this spine for the Roosters is it's really screwing with my head. A little bit, to be completely honest, I don't know how how they're going to click um, for the Saturday afternoon game. The thing about that being a Saturday afternoon game, it means that the wing is going to be looking into the sun. Uh, we know at the best of times that Tommy Talao is not great under the high ball. So, based on the fact that he was playing on the what was he? Talao was on the right last week, I think. I think so. Yeah, uh, left. Yeah, left. Okay, so if Talal's on the left, that means Brett Morris should be on the right if he plays where he usually does. So I'm going to go for a Brett Morris anytime try scorer. I think that he'll get one first game back. It'll be a Tedesco little tap on that gets him over. Um, in terms of anything else, I think I'm going to leave it at that. There's nothing else that's really filling me with a bunch of confidence, um, you could make an argument for the under 42 and a half. But that being said, the last five Tigers games, the lowest scoring game was 42 points. So any, many, money mo on that one. Tigers 12 and a half, Roosters to win, Brett Morris anytime. Yeah, so I, I join your line of thinking, and that's why I'm going to go Tigers on the 12 and a half and i'm also gonna say go the under i think that the tigers need to show up in defense i think the combination of hutchison flanagan again new combination not seen this year it's good there's going to be a lot of running from the halves don't expect to see the same passing game that you usually would kiri is the man that's usually on the shoulder when breaks happen he's usually the man that's putting someone like takiaho through, through the gaps so I think his loss is going to be one that is severely felt by the Roosters. So I think taking the 12 and a half for the Tigers is playing it safe. And I think it's a smart one to take as well. Um, as for the under, definitely take that. Both teams, this one's going to be one in defence just because I think the the attack's going to be questionable. Both teams know that, both teams know that there's not going to be a lot of points on offer. Um, and they're going to have to really toughen up in defence because it's not going to be easy to crack the other side. The Roosters are wanting to stay in and around those premiership places. The Tigers are desperately fighting for a final spot. Both teams have got a lot to lose from losing this game. So I'd expect to see a lot of defence, not a lot of points, and the Tigers are getting up on that 12 and a half. Yeah, uh, completely agree on that one. 5.25, if you go the Tigers 12 and a half, Brett Morris, any time Roosters to win. Five bucks on the dot if you take Maddie's Tigers 12 and a half under 42 and a half Roosters on the line. Oh, Roosters on the win, sorry. Wow. Yeah. Yep. 
<laughs> okay then. And uh, with that then, we will get on to the next one. This game is probably the toughest one to call this week. Sea Eagles versus Rabbitohs and 8th versus ninth. So much to play for. If Souths win, the gap between 8th and ninth becomes 6 points. If the Sea Eagles win, they close that gap just to 2. And I can't see either team realistically giving the other one one an inch in this one. It's going to be very, very tough. Uh, Johns comes in for Souths. Um, you know, surprisingly, Thompson will play for the Seagulls this week after comp- only what could be described as him develop- some, developing some sort of fork tongue over the weekend and having to have that stitch back together in one of the most gruesome injuries I've ever seen on a rugby league field. It's just it's beyond comprehension just how tough these players are. But um, how how do you see this one playing out? I um, jeez, mate, that's oof. that that's a that's a nasty way to describe it. But you're not too too wrong there. Uh yeah, a tough one to pick. Ruben Garrick back at fullback. You can't help but think that uh, old mate Albert Hopperwadi would have been a shout if he hadn't gone to the Warriors. For, for a loan to fill it to the wing, it puts to Pow back into the proposition, coming back after a couple of weeks off. Trebojevic to lock Corey Waddell back to the pine and Jackie G back into the reserves. Interesting to see that Adam Fanua Blake is named in the 21. So keep an eye, on, an eye out on that. As for the bunnies, just Bailey Sirenin coming back into the run on side, Jack Johns. Moves on to the bench, Liam Knight, getting nicely acquainted with the match review committee. So he's out through suspension. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's the best way to describe this game. It's, um, look, just looking at the team list, not going off anything else. I'm going to say with the Rabbitohs, but... Look, if Cust and Cherry Evans try to wiggle their way around like they did last week, maybe, Manly, maybe. It's, so I, I watched South last week and I obviously backed against them. I said Cowboys, but it, they didn't get up convincingly. As I, <laughs> I'm, I'm still very annoyed about that game. Uh, the Seagulls as well, narrowly losing out. So... I mean, this this one really could go either way. So, if if you want a safety bet on this one, you take either team one to twelve. You take the under, and you take either team one to twelve, just because there's going to be a lot of defensive. There's going to be a lot of defensive work. Both teams have got far too much to lose because if South let that gap close, their run home isn't the most pleasant. As as is the Seagulls. The Seagulls, this pretty much ends their season if they lose this weekend. And I know that there's, what, five games left? But what are the chances that Souths drop drop three and they pick up three? So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure as well Souths have got the better uh, for and against as well. So the Seagulls can't even, can't even rely on that. The only thing that does concern me about the Seagulls is that Although Brendan Elliott isn't what I'd regard as a as a decent fullback, he was still a ball playing fullback to the likes of Trebojevic that also had a slight running game. Whereas Garrick doesn't have a ball playing game; he's a runner. You, you see time and time again when teams try to use a winger as a fullback, all that it means is that if that fullback chimes into a play around the back, he just runs it himself. He either gives it too early and it doesn't offset the line or he just runs himself. So I think the Souths will be aware of that. And obviously Souths have got the trail Mitchell there. He had a bit of a stinker last week. Um, a few drop balls. It's just if Mitchell drops one ball, then that's it. His confidence is completely shattered and you, you've lost him for the game. So I'm, I'm wary of that for Souths as well. And that's why I'm on the Head to head, I'm going to go manly. Ooh. I'm going to say for tips, 
Yeah, I'm going to make this one a bit spicy this week. I'm going to go Manly. I'm going to go either team 1 to 12. So if if you are feeling more risky, go Seagulls 1 to 12. I'm going to say take the under on this one just because I think there's going to be a lot of defensive effort. Manly are a team that teams basically struggle to post points against. I know I know that I say that while the Knights put 26 on them last week, but it's I, I can see that this one's going to be a very defensively minded game. Sorry, I, I just want to clarify something really quickly. The the Sea Eagles are a team that teams struggle to uh, put points against. That's what you said, right? That's right. Let me run you through the, the, their the, last the eight games. Let me let me run you through their last eight games. Conceded twenty six v Newcastle, twenty six v the Warriors, forty two v Penrith, twelve against the Cowboys, eighteen against Parramatta. 34 against the Dragons, 14 against the Newcastle in the wet, 40 against Cronulla. But teams struggle to put points on against them. So let, let's go through that list. The Sharks have got the second best attack in the league. The Panthers currently sit top of the table. At the time when they played Parramatta, they were also top of the table. Um, God, who else were on that list? The Warriors. The Warriors are massively unpredictable. They'll either show up and score 50 or show up and concede 50. So I, I think that there's a there's a few teams in there that the scoreline justifies, but in games where the Seagulls should be winning or there or thereabouts, teams do struggle to post up points, and I can see South struggling to post up points here. But still, it's going to be a close game. So take the under, take the Seagulls 1-12 to or the either team 1-12, to depending on how safe or risky you want to take this one. Okay, the under, by the way, 43 and a half for, for those who are wondering as of about 5.30 on Tuesday afternoon. Sponsor, sponsor us, please, sports bet. Um, yeah, this is not a nice one to pick. Um, in the last five, it went 34-26 to Souths. Two of those, two, oh, hang on a minute. Am I doing my math right? Yep, two of the last three have gone to uh, to a one point margin, um, and then Souths win by twenty eight. Manly wins by thirty eight. Can't really do math this afternoon. All righty, good to know. In terms of any tips, ah, look, I don't really know. To be honest, I'm struggling here looking at sports bet, trying to figure out what I want to give you, but I'm not really seeing much. All right, I think I've got some. We're going to multi this one. Bunnies going on the head to head, and take note, this is the value tip of the week for me. Dane Gagai, he's in a rich vein of form. He's paying 250 for any time try scorer. So we're going to go with him. I think there's going to be a lot of points because I'm not really sure about either team's defense right now, if I'm being perfectly honest. So we're going to go the over 43 and a half on this. Um, and I'm not quite ballsy enough to go Cade Cust for two weeks in a row, but I do think they're going to try and target the second row of Manly. Um as you mentioned, Maddie, I don't think they're going to be able to quite get outside as much as they like with Ruben Garrick playing out the back. But I think what we'll see is we'll see a cheeky, bustling try from Marty Tapao. I think he'll come on for his second stint. I think that he'll have one of those angled runs where he starts straight on and starts to target towards the interchange props when they do eventually come on. Um, so we're going with Marty Tapao as just a, a little bit of a hey, how's it going? Let's throw let's throw some good value here into this multi. If we add them all together, and Lord knows that I can't do addition at the best of times. You go Gagai at two fifty, Marty Tapao paying nine bucks for an anytime try, and the over on the points at forty three and a half. We are looking 
at 44.50 for the multi. Now, do I think realistically this is going to get up as a multi? No, I do not. But three out of the four, I think, are a good shout in in the bunnies, Dane Gagai, and the over. Um, if you take out Marty, it's 475 on that multi. Put in Marty 44.50. You you take your pick on that. Um, by the way, we also count all of these tips as singles as well, just for clarification. But if you do want to, if you do feel balls, you want to put a cup of coffee on it. I think that's a shout. Okay then. Well, I think we've been on this one long enough, and uh, we'll get to the next one. Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs take on the New Zealand Warriors, the absolute toughest team to back for against under over. The Warriors are just so hard to pick. It's just, I mean, I think the Warriors win this one. I mean, the, the Bulldogs go through a few changes. So you got Hopoati back to fullback. He moves Meany to the wing. No, what's any Zalesniak this week? Going through, you've got Marshall King bumps Katoa to the bench. Tolman into prop. Dory comes in as well. Uh, Thompson goes to the bench. Jackson goes to loose. A lot of changes there for this Bulldog side. As for the Warriors, you've got Perham coming into centre and Murchie into the side as well in the 17 shirt as Isaiah Papali uh, replaces uh, Katoa, who is suspended this week. My super coach team has taken a hammering, and I just realised. So that is very annoying seeing Katoa out. Um, yeeks. What Bulldog side's going to show up? The second half Bulldog side from last week or the first half Bulldog side? I, I think they, they're trying to avoid the spoon. I think I think there's going to be a, a bit more fight in them. So, yeah, but this Warriors side, just so unpredictable. I, I hate trying to pick the either, either or against the Warriors. It's just so tough. I, I honestly could not tell you on this one. I really don't know what way to go. I I'm, Honestly, I'm going to need a minute to, to think about the, the head-to-head tip, but I am going to give you my betting tips. Uh, over 43 and a half, I think, is pretty handy. Uh, four of the last five. Sorry. All, yeah, all of the last five have gone over 35. If you want to do an alternative, three of the last four, uh, three of the last five, sorry, have gone over 43 and a half. And well, I mean, you look at these two teams, not overly fantastic in terms of defense. The Warriors last week did hold Penrith to, to 18 points. They have held the Roosters to 18 points, but they conceded 46 against the Sharks. They conceded 22 and 20, two of the last three weeks. Their attack, as you said, it comes and goes, but they're starting to get a little bit of normality there in the spine. As for the Dogs, three of their last five have gone over 50. The game against Parramatta, 34. The game against Newcastle, for 30. It's a tough one, but I'm going the over. In terms of any time try scorer, it wouldn't be a bet if I didn't put one on. Uh, I'm going to say... Roger, I think RTS is going to have a great game. We saw last week him scoring with a kick through the middle. I think he steps around Carrod Holland, who's a bit of a defensive turnstile, um, and gets through the line from close range. I don't know. I really don't know on, on anything else. I'm struggling to find anything. I think you could make an argument for the Bulldogs plus 12 and a half. But I think I'm just going to leave it with over 43 and a half. Roger, anytime try scorer. And the dogs. I'm going the dogs. Wow. Okay. Okay. This is going to be a very interesting week. There's a lot of differences. I, I'm going to go the Warriors. I'm going to say... Uh, that the dogs don't reach 20 points just because I think last week was 
a bit of a special performance from the from the dogs. I don't think they're replicated this week. I think the Warriors will pick them apart up the middle before working it to the edges and some of those big wingers will just be a problem. Um, so I'm going to go dogs not to hit 20 points. So alternatively, take the Warriors on the race 20. But pick which one you want there. But for me, I go dogs not to hit 20 points. I go Petahiku anytime try scorer. And I go... I'm going to go Warriors 13 plus. I'm going to put just because I don't I don't know which Warriors team is going to show up. I I think if this lands because I I mean the Warriors are just so unpredictable. I can't figure out as to whether they're going to eke out a win, be absolutely decimated, or or completely destroy the dogs. So I'm going to go with completely destroy the dogs. I think their defense is going to tighten up. I think Hiku is going to get over. And the dogs don't reach 20 points. All right. Your multi. Warrior. War, oh, I thought it was better than that. Warriors 13 plus. Hiku anytime. Dogs under under 20 and a half. Is only 575. I thought it was going to be a lot better than that, to be completely honest. Yeah. All right. Well, 575 for okay. you. Um, I'll throw mine in a little multi-calculator as well, just because why not? Um, yeah, look, I have no confidence in, in saying the dogs. I am more than happy to admit that. I'm just running with the gut feeling on this one. The gut, the gut just told me dogs, so I'm taking it. I'm going to let it run. Dogs over 43 and a half, and Roger paying 230, 1075 is that multi. The final game of the round is the Newcastle Knights taking on the North Queensland Cowboys. Um, The Cowboys narrowly missing out last week, whereas the Knights narrowly winning their game. I mean, the Cowboys looked far better, but I'm not going to back them this week just because the only reason they looked better is because Michael Morgan took the approach of if you want a job doing right, do it yourself. So he just ran. He just ran it every single time. Uh, there wasn't much link-up play. I think teams will have just caught on to the fact that it, it was just a Michael Morgan running game that kept them in that game. Um, you know, Hampton looked okay. Drinkwater looked good at fullback. Tabby Ifido, of course, scoring that try. But I see there being too much quality in this nice side. Not on the edges, but definitely through the middle. But I think the Cowboys are as stuck for quality on the edges as the Knights are. So if you go back to the 27th of June, you and I were watching the Cowboys game from two very different parts of the world against the Knights and asking what Cowboys side had shown up because they were up 26 not at halftime. We then saw in the second half the Knights pull up 20 points in about 15 minutes, the Cowboys scored to kind of put them to bed, but a 32-20 to 20 game in Townsville after getting thumped the week before. Again, it depends on what Cowboys side turns up. You could have the Cowboys side that took it to the Bunnies um, and very nearly took them out, or you know the side that took it to the Raiders and very nearly upset one of the you know, maybe premiership contenders. Or you could have the side that I chose two weeks ago who turns up against the Gold Coast and gets absolutely thumped. You can't tip them with any confidence. I'm agreeing with you in the sense that I think the Knights get up here. I can't really picture much else happening, although, you know, we know what happens when I say stuff like that. Um, I am going to go with the hammer to go over again. Hammer so Tabby Y Fido for an anytime try scorer. I think he's got the speed to burn around Toa and Heimel Hunt. I, it, you very well could see something like what we did last week where you have drink water dinking over the top, the hammer just screaming through, and you can just see the flames kind of flying up off his heels as he runs towards the try line. So Tabby Y Fido, anytime try scorer. But I can't spot much else, to be honest. If you if you want to be a little cheeky, if you really want to be a little cheeky, 
you can make an argument for Mitchell Pearce at three bucks sixty for an anytime try scorer. Um, but I'm going to go again with the over. It should be pretty good conditions up there in uh, in Newcastle. The, oh, the over at forty four and a half. But you know what? Let's roll with it. I think they'll get it. Both sides attack well, but are questionable in defence. And, I mean, you see with the Cowboys, it's either amazing or not. As far as the Knights go, um, three or their last three games have been 42 or above. I think 45 is pretty achievable. So, Tabio Fido, anytime try scorer, over 44 and a half. I'll give you a second try scorer just to try and put some juice in there just because why not? Because I'm a try scoring addict. There's no better way to put it. Um, let's go with Shibasaki at 270. I think he has a shot coming up against a couple of centers who aren't overly good at defense. Off a check, there's nothing wrong with him. I think he's a solid center, but Shibasaki, I think, will have a nice little ball on the outside from Kalen Ponger. It'll be a two on one. He'll dummy and go. Okay, I like the logic. Um, I'm going to join you on the over. I'm also going to say Knights 13 plus. And the reason that I say that is the Knights have far much more to lose from this game than the Cowboys do. The Cowboys can afford to throw the ball around just because they're, they're, they're not making it. While they still mathematically can qualify for finals, there is just it's way too much. They've won three games all season. It's not going to happen. They, lick, they go away at the end of the season, lick their wounds for 2020, and that's it. But I think that the Knights, knowing that the gap between sort of finals and non-final spots could close up very quickly. The Knights need to get back up into those top four. I mean, you look at them through all the way up to, I think it was about round nine or 10. They were uh, they were in the top four. They were going good. And then all of a sudden, just their season completely derailed uh, and they've been slowly sliding down the table. And they need to get back up there. And I think a big win against the Cowboys fills them with confidence and Gets them back to realistically where they should be because there's a lot of quality in this uh, in this night nice side. So yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go the over. I'm gonna go Knights thirteen plus as well. All right. Um, before we wrap things up, you said your value was what again? I. I, I... I said Warriors because I thought it was going to be like a twenty dollar multi, and sports bet's got five five seventy five. Oh, all right, <laughs> right then, okay, well, yeah, we've tripled it up on one of the toughest games of the round to call. And you're going to give me five seventy five? <laughs> like, no, it yeah, can't run like that. Sports bet, you know, don't sponsor us anymore. We don't want it. We don't. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, um, we want the sponsorship. I. Yeah, we'll still take a sponsorship. Uh, retract my last statement. <laughs> Scrub it from the records. Um. Ah, oh God, where is my where is my value this week? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Panthers Sharks game. The, the tips I gave for that one. That's gonna be my value and uh, uh, my best bet. I honestly don't know where my best bet lays, just because this week's so unpredictable. Um, do you know what best bet? Seagulls versus Souths. Uh, full send. I have complete faith. Full send on the multi. All right. See, I was I was only going to offer up the one of the singles, but you know, if we're playing if we're playing that one, then you know what, I'll bite. Um, I will go with the best multi. I'll give you the best multi is the Roosters multi. Roosters to win. Tigers twelve and a half. And Brett Morris anytime. Best single. I mean, if I really I don't even really have to pick one. But I think the best single, if you want just a little bit of value, um, you go with the Raiders on a race to twenty. Okay then. Well, I think that does it there then. Uh um, thank you for joining us once more um, as we attempt to take you through the teams to the best of our ability, albeit limited. And uh, thanks again to the guys over at RCR 
for sponsoring this video. If you would go check them out, their link's going to be in the description. Use code CKM for 20% off your entire order. Uh, free delivery over over £50 as well. I can't remember if that's just in the UK or outside the UK. Either way, go spend your money there. They deserve it. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. We will see you for the next one as we talk about how well we did or just how badly we got this one wrong. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.